this video will kick off a blog that I'm going to do um, that's going to chronicle the development of the new feature that we're going to add into the next version of the F16 V2. And I thought, um, you know, if there was a way to uh, modify the existing version, that that would be a good um, tutorial or blog to do. Because I know there's going to be several that probably want to know, hey, how do I do this to my uh, my existing F16 V2? Uh, basically, the, the uh, modification that we're going to make is going to allow us to um, um, use the F16 V2 as a remote to the FPP uh, Falcon Player system. Uh, where the Falcon player is a master, and then wirelessly the Falcon player sends a sync signal to the F-16 V2. And since the F-16 V2 um, has the ability to have the an SD card, which is right there, you might be able to see it, but there's a, a little card slot right here that allows you to plug in, you know, a, a large SD card, a micro SD card, uh, that has your sequence data in the FSEQ format that both Vixen 3 and Xlights produces. So you'll be able to insert your sequences um, onto that card. And then the, whenever the FPP master um, goes ahead and starts playing that particular sequence, it's going to send over the sync packet. Probably comes over about 800, every 800 milliseconds or so, there's a sync packet that comes over that has the um, information that's needed to... Uh, open up the file and start playing at a particular frame. So in order to get the wireless there, what I've done is I've taken my wireless module off of my ESP Pixel Stick that I bought uh, several months ago. And uh, what a wonderful device that is. Um, if you haven't uh, tried the ESP Pixel Stick, uh, I encourage you to, to get some. I know Sporadic is the developer, main developer on this project, and it's just an awesome little board that he's got. And um, it um, leverages the fact that you could use a small little um, ESP01 module that's like three to five dollar range to receive wireless um, communications, and um, it drives. Uh, um, I think it drives a uh, three wire, four wire. I think they have a version of the code, or now it's been merged in that does the uh, GECE. Um, but yeah, if you want to get more information on that, uh, their home is on doityourselfchristmas.com. Again, it's called the ESP Pixel Stick, and I believe they're on version 2 now, which I haven't got yet. Um, but it's an awesome little little controller, um, and there's more information that you can get on that. I'm not the best schooled on it, but um, since I had it laying on my desk, I thought, I thought, well, the ESP module is probably a really good choice since it's really cheap. And it only basically functions as like a, a, a bridge of serial communications, um, you know, um, to uh, Ethernet type wireless. So great little module. And so what I've done is I've wired it to the F16 V2 um, processor board. And there's only four pins that I have wired on there. And there happens to be four good spots to wire onto the board. Uh, the first one is the ground pin, and then the next one is the 3.3 uh, volts, and then we have a receive from my processor board transmit to the ESP module, and then a transmit to receive. And um, the only one that really didn't have a hole uh, for you to, to wire it up, I actually put in a mail header because I like to get the strain relief of a mail header, and then I solder it actually to the mail header and then put a piece of heat shrink over it. And it just gives it a little bit more flexibility. I don't have to worry about the it breaking off right where it meets the hole in the board. And so I went ahead and I also put a header on, on this so extra pin. Now I will document all this on how to do it whenever I prove the concept. But the idea is, is basically I want to use the ESP module of, with no firmware. I basically want to use it with the stock firmware where it's just basically... A, uh, ready to receive AT commands, and and I don't even know if you wrote your own software if you would disable those AT commands. I don't I don't know enough about the module yet, but I do know that right off the bat, most of the modules you get it runs at about 100 megabits or 112, 800 or something like that, um, not megabits, um, kilobits, and you could um, just send AT commands from the processor. Uh, to put the board in different modes. For instance, like you can say, okay, I want to, you know, listen in on this particular port. Um, you know, in this case, I want to listen into a broadcast address coming from the Pi, uh, a broadcast uh, a, um, signal coming or 
packets coming from the Pi. And that's what I'm going to do. So basically, I've, I've kind of tested it uh, by connecting it up to a FTDI 3.3 volt little dongle that I bought from Mauser. And I was able to uh, put it in the different modes and um, receive packets from the Pi. And basically now the next step in this process is going to be um, I'm going to write a debugging routine from within the uh, in, within the uh, Falcon controller that outputs uh, anything that comes in and anything that goes out uh, onto a UDP uh, debugging port. That way I can see exactly what's going on from within the Falcon, uh, what it's receiving, what it's sending out. Uh, on the serial port. So I'm going to create a little serial to, uh, to you know, UDP type of uh, debugging uh, port, and that'll be the first step in the next video. So I hope you enjoy the video, and hopefully we'll see where this takes us. But the whole overall idea is to be able to receive the sync packets, play the sequence directly from the controller without having any E131 data going over the network. As you have a con When you have a controller that could uh, play up to 32,000 channels, um, you know, having that being uh, taken off the network is probably going to be a beneficial thing. And, and I think our sync packet from FPP is about 44 bytes now. And I'd just like to thank uh, um, Chris Pinkham of the Falcon team uh, and the, and the uh, leader of the uh, FPP or Falcon player um, team to just for all the work that he's done with master and uh, remote. And I believe that we're starting to leverage the full benefits of that and several people are are starting to offload a lot of the channels that we have uh, that would normally be on an E131 network. For instance, the P10 panels that we're uh, driving, uh, some of them are in excess of 50 to 75,000 channels and with uh, the master and the remote with the BBB or even with the uh, Pi using some of Ron P's um, um, pixel board or, or, or P10 boards. Um, we've been able to offload a lot of that data off the E131 network by just sending the sync packet. So that's kind of where this is going. I think that's the evolution of where where, where uh, controllers might go. So thank you.